diagram them out here. Okay, here's what I said about gated channels. Um, so, some of these um, are chemically gated. They open or close in response to a chemical attaching to them. Some are open and close in response to a, a difference in charge, a whole lot of charge, pull them open or pull them shut. You, you need, don't need to worry about the two different kinds of gated channels. Okay, so here's our graph again, okay? We're at resting potential, it was negative 70, right? It was negative 70. That means again, the inside is 70 millivolts more negative than the outside, okay? This nerve cell is at rest. Anything that will cause the inside to be a little less, oops, a little less negative, right? depolarizing it a little less negative is on the way to an action potential to that impulse thing okay how much sorry let's do this how can it get less negative inside open the sodium channels because then if these positive sodiums come in it's a little less negative inside so opening the sodium gated channels is going to be the beginning of this process that a nerve impulse is okay so okay how much less negative does it have to get inside before this impulse is like triggered that's what the word threshold refers to the threshold is like what's the limit that's then gonna boom cause this thing to happen well, the limit is negative 55 millivolts. So it's got to be a 15 millivolt change toward the positive end, right? And if that threshold is reached, then the next event happens. Okay. Anything that causes the difference to be more than negative 70, like here, let's call it negative 80, that means we're further away from this threshold we're further away from this nerve firing because the threshold is where it fires negative 55 so keep those thoughts in mind we'll come back to them here is the thing that you might have to analyze to simply say where in this diagram is resting potential and where is the action potential because they won't be labeled like they are in this diagram. You'll just get the graph, right? This is not hard. We've already defined that down here at negative 70, whether they have it labeled on the graph like I just did or not, that's at resting potential. And this big spike up here is the action. This big spike up here where the inside actually became positive compared to the outside, and you don't need to know this particular number, right? This is the action potential, okay? How did that happen? A bunch of sodiums came in, okay? A whole bunch. So keeping that in mind, right? What is gonna trigger this big spike is simply getting to this threshold. If the inside can become 15 millivolts more positive than it is at rest if we get the negative 55 then what's going to happen is that's going to trigger a whole bunch of sodium gates to open and when they open now the inside becomes positive compared to the outside so the first set of events again in a nerve impulse is again sodium gates opening and enough of them open to get to negative 55 that triggers a whole bunch of them to get open in one little place that's the local part of this idea again whether that's the cell body or dendrite or an axon if even one area gets to negative 55 and has a whole bunch of sodium gates open in that area so that a whole bunch of sodiums come in and it flips it to that what that is going to do is it's going to trigger it to happen in the next place, in the next place, in the next place. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but that's what propagate means. Okay. And so now what has happened in this one place that we just talked about is a depolarization. Actually, I never liked that word. I don't hate it, but uh, because what does depolarize mean? It means you're not polarized anymore. 
But what happened here was that for a brief split, split second, this membrane didn't have a difference in charge between inside and outside. It was depolarized. But really what has happened is it be, has become reversed polarized. It started negative inside compared to outside. Now it's positive inside compared to outside. So I've always liked reverse polarized, but you don't see it here. Okay, but you should understand hopefully why I prefer that. Okay, so this is like the gun has fired to make another analogy. Boom, the trigger has been pulled, the gun is fired. In order for this gun to fire again, you got to cock it again, right? And that means you got to get back to this resting potential. We'll talk about this little thing in a second. That's a key, a very key thing. Um, you got to get back to this resting potential for this to happen again in that same place. Okay. But now if we go to right here, right, if we had this action potential happens here, I'll put the spike like it is on the graph. Now I like put it in the cell. If it happens here, that causes it to happen next to it and then next to it and then next to it. And this spike just goes always in this direction, right? Dendrite, cell body, axon, always in that direction. It can actually start anywhere. It can start in the dendrite. It can start in the cell body. It can even start in the axon, but it's always going to go in that direction, and we'll see why later. Actually, yeah, this is where it gets a little tricky later. Okay, so now we're going to we're going to break this down again and again, the same thing, and this is a good one to do that. Here is a series of diagrams that show these channels, right? There's a potassium channel, which we haven't talked about yet. There's a sodium channel. We got to work the potassium into it now, okay? Um, they don't show a sodium potassium pump in here. I'll put one in here, right? Because that's a player here also, right? So what this diagram shows, number one, right? Corresponds to the graph up here. We're at resting potential. We're at negative 70 inside compared to outside, right? Look, the gates are closed. Sodiums can't diffuse in. Potassiums can't diffuse out. And we're going to stay that way, right? Until something causes sodium gates to open. What something could that be? It could be the initial stimulus of this nerve cell right? Or it could be in the area right next to this, an action potential happened, and that opened some sodium gates right next to it. But the key is that to begin this impulse thing, sodium gates open, sodiums flood inside, right? In this one little area, some sodiums flood inside. If enough sodiums flood inside, right, this picture corresponds to part two right here, we're getting closer to negative 55. We're getting closer to the threshold. If we get close enough, what happens? Boom, a whole bunch of sodium gates open in this one area. Boom, see now this one's open. See that was closed before, now it's open, right? We get a flood of sodiums in, corresponds to this spike in the graph, spike that goes into the positive region. Now the inside's more positive than the outside, right? So what does that trigger? Well, now's where the potassiums come into play. So far, the potassium gates have been closed, but now they open. This reverse polarization, now we're positive inside compared to outside, opens the potassium gates. How does it open them? This you should understand by now. This is, a, here's, a, I'm going to make up potassium gate right here. It's a protein. It's got positive and negative charged areas all over it because of polar covalent bonds, right, between its atoms. And at the gate part, if there's enough positives inside, it's going to pull and tug the gate to be open. It's all tugging and pulling. It's all electrostatic attraction stuff that makes all this happen. So now if the potassium gate's open, what happens? Positive things go outside. That means now the inside is again getting less negative than the outside. 
This time it's because positives have left. Now a bunch of positive potassiums are outside. The polarity was reversed. And so is the situation in terms of gradient, right? If we go back to when the sodium gates open, when all these sodiums came in, we reverse the gradient. Now there's more sodiums inside than outside. When the potassiums diffused out, we also reversed the potassium gradient now. Now there's more potassiums concentration-wise outside than inside. But what we've done in terms of the membrane situation is first we started more negative inside and then we became more positive inside by letting the sodiums in. But then by letting the potassiums out, we got back to where we started. In fact, again, we're coming to this. We got a little past where we started. We'll come to that back to that in a second, right? So now we're back around resting potential, but this neuron is not the same as it was, right? Over here, it had more sodium outside and more potassium inside. Here now, it's got more potassium outside and more sodium inside. So while it did all this, that action potential thing, it can't do it again until we shoot the sodiums back out and the potassiums back in. And that's where the sodium potassium pump, which has been working all this time, needs to come into play. This is where the cell gets reset again, so to speak, or better yet, this little local area of the cell that we're talking about so that all this can happen again. That is the sodium potassium pumps work. So now back to this. Here we look at this little part in purple here, label number five, called again the undershoot. Undershoot, why? That's because the line went under the resting potential for a very split second. All of these events are very split seconds. Now this cell is even more negative inside compared to outside. What's that mean? It's even further away from firing again. And this is why in the undershoot, it can't fire again. And that's an important part of this story that we'll get to in just a second. We'll tack that in, in just a second. How, why the undershoot is so significant here. Okay. So I'm going to go back to your uh, IB syllabus thing. Remember what they threatened you for, and I think what they will hold you only to, is that if they give you this graph, which is produced by a little machine called an oscilloscope, you saw that word in there, right? All they think they're going to ask you to label is action potential, resting potential. Not the undershoot, not the threshold. Um, uh,